This anime begins inside a dungeon where a boy discovers a giant creature and is frozen in fear. The creature, annoyed by his presence, lets out a powerful roar. The boy believes he is going to die after encountering this monster and is frustrated with fate, lamenting that all he wanted was to be a Mithril-class adventurer. As the monster slowly approaches, it devours the boy. After a while, the boy awakens, confused about being alive. He looks at his reflection in the water and realizes he has turned into a living skeleton. He looks at his hands and screams in disbelief, thinking the situation can't be real. The scene shifts to a town bustling with people. A boy explains that adventurers usually rise early, and so do most of the poor living in towns. Only nobles, the wealthy, merchants, and scholars with chaotic lives sleep late. The boy washes his face and slowly gets dressed. He tells us about a friend who spends days awake, focused on her research, and plans to visit her on his day off. The boy, Renfena, a bronze-class adventurer from a small, unknown village, picks up his sword. He goes to the Adventurer's Guild and explains that adventurers rise early for tasks, as good jobs are available in the morning. However, adventurers can only take on tasks that match their rank and skill level, mostly involving monster hunting, bodyguarding, herb gathering, or even cleaning sewers. A group of adventurers greets Rent, asking if he intends to return to the Moon Reflection Labyrinth. Rent replies he will only go back if he doesn't find a good job. The group praises his work ethic and wishes him luck. Rent then continues to check the mission board, pondering a return to the labyrinth. We learn that while adventurers usually work in groups, Rent works alone. Despite being an adventurer for 10 years, he's not a strong fighter and has been in the bronze rank the longest, the second lowest of all ranks. Rent leaves the guild and walks through the town. Despite his bronze level, he survives by hunting monsters and selling magic runes and materials to the guild. He buys bread from a bakery with what he has. Rent lives carefully, even saving for emergencies. He leaves town for the Moon Reflection Labyrinth. At that moment, Rent loses a crucial adventurer trait, caution. Entering the desolate labyrinth, which he has explored countless times, he discovers a collapsed passage leading to an uncharted area. Excited by this discovery, which could be lucrative, he enters the passage, hoping to find valuable items like magic equipment or weapons. He considers informing the guild about the passage, as the information could be worth a fortune. Rent continues exploring, drawing a map, unaware he should have avoided this suspicious, dangerous path. He sees a light at the end of a corridor and explores the area, finding a large tree and the creature that roared at him. Terrified, he sees a real dragon for the first time. According to legend, dragons take many forms, some even larger than normal dragons. Although he had never seen one, he knew this dragon was not ordinary. Rent accepts his fate and is devoured by the dragon, powerless against such a high-level creature. We return to the scene of the skeleton adventurer, Rent, wondering how he could be alive after being devoured by a dragon. At that moment, Rent began to question whether he could still be considered alive, as he had become an immortal skeleton, a being often referred to as an undead. He was uncertain if it was a good idea to return to the village, fearing that a bishop or priest might mistake him for a hostile creature and destroy him with purifying magic, as undead are seen as against the divine will. Rent wondered whether being devoured by the dragon counted as death, as he remained conscious and retained his memories. Unsure of what to do, he wanted to return to the village but also did not want to be obliterated by everyone. He tried to stay calm, realizing it made no sense to seek answers about something he did not understand. He picked up his sword and explored the area, worried that the dragon had left the area. He thought about staying in the dungeon until a solitary adventurer came by, hoping to approach them for advice. However, for that plan to work, he needed to find a way to communicate with humans. Along the way, he encountered another skeleton. He lifted his sword, ready to fight, but felt heavy due to his deteriorated physical aptitude, as he had no muscles. In terms of strength, he was now weaker than a human. As a human, he would have easily defeated the skeleton, but now he had to be much more cautious. Rent approached the skeleton to strike but fell due to the weight he couldn't handle. The enemy skeleton also stumbled, its leg falling off and being reattached. Rent was desperate, realizing he couldn't do much with his strength. He then remembered his magic and was surprised he could still use it. Quickly, he used magic to enhance his physical abilities, which allowed him to wield the sword easily and defeat the skeleton by destroying its skull. By doing so, he absorbed the skeleton's vitality. We learn that monsters are strange beings that evolve into extraordinary creatures over time and experience. While some can change classes, skeletons are always skeletons and never evolve. However, in rare cases, they can become ghouls, a process known as existential evolution. 
thinking he could pass as human if he had clothes and a mask, Rent set a goal to achieve existential evolution and defeat every dungeon monster to become a ghoul. Meanwhile, Rent's friend in her office is waiting for his visit, and begins to worry as he hasn't returned yet, so she decides to prepare dinner. Despite being undead, ghouls have some flesh and look somewhat human. Back with Rent, he defeats monsters he encounters, realizing the absorbed life energy heals him and restores his magic, allowing him to fight tirelessly. He decides to look for a strong monster and encounters a slime. Rent tells us that slimes aren't strong monsters but are hard to defeat, as there are only two ways to do it, piercing the core or using magic. Slimes can resist physical attacks due to their gelatinous consistency, making it hard to destroy the core. Rent had to try to damage the core as he didn't have attack magic, making it difficult to defeat the slime quickly. He approached the slime and, at the perfect moment, dodged its attack and counterattacked with a vertical slash, hitting the slime's core and defeating it. Rent admits that the hit was lucky, as slimes have always been his worst enemy. He approached the gelatinous body and took the magic rune and liquid from the slime, storing it in several jars. The slime fluid is coveted by women as a cosmetic to soften the skin due to its properties. The next day, a guild worker asks Sheila, the receptionist, if the novice adventurer had joined a group. Sheila says she couldn't find anyone to recruit her due to her lack of combat experience. So she sent a letter to Rent to recruit her, explaining that the novice needed money urgently, and assigned her a mission in the Moon Reflection Labyrinth while waiting for Rent's response. Back with Rent, he sits on a rock, not suffering from sleep or hunger, having fought the area's monsters all night, and believes existential evolution will take time to achieve. Rent shares that, initially as a skeleton, he struggled to wield his sword and relied on magic. But as he continued to defeat many monsters, he gradually regained strength comparable to a human. He thought about seeking out groups of monsters in the dungeon, believing that with his current power, he could defeat a group of up to four monsters. However, if there were more, he would have to flee, though he doubted that such a large number of monsters existed in the dungeon. Rent reflects on his life, lamenting his weakness. He became an adventurer ten years ago, not counting the training he did before becoming one. Counting that training, he has 20 years of experience, yet he is not strong, nor can he compare to high-ranking adventurers who mostly do not possess spiritual energy, mana, or divinity because they specialize in one area, unlike him. Rent thinks he should have focused on a single power to become strong. Looking at his hand, he mentions he's not cut out to be an adventurer. Usually, people give up after spending five years at the bronze level and return to their villages to farm or find other work. Despite this, he continued as long as he could survive, using his free time to train and seeking help from his friend, a researcher who provided information about monsters and magic. In his long career as a bronze adventurer, he accepted all kinds of tasks and did everything he could in those 10 years to achieve his dream of becoming a Mithril-class adventurer. Rent gets up from the rock and continues his journey, mentioning that Mithril-class adventurers are above gold and platinum-class adventurers. The Mithril-class is known to be one of the hardest to achieve, as even the most naturally talented people cannot reach such heights. The few who have achieved Mithril-class are often heroes with the power to save entire countries. Rent vows to himself that he will reach the Mithril-class, having dedicated his whole life to it, and even as a skeleton, nothing will stop him. He encourages himself and explores the labyrinth, facing and effortlessly defeating all the monsters he encounters. Rent encounters a skeleton in one of the corridors and defeats it with a single blow, starting to doubt himself and questioning if he is becoming stronger than when he was human. To test this, he decides to look for a slime, finding one at the end of a narrow corridor. The slime, alarmed, attacks him by throwing acid slime as a projectile. Rent quickly moves towards the slime, dodging each attack more easily than before. When close enough, he pierces the slime's core with a thrust, defeating it in one blow, this time without luck. Rent is impressed by his own strength, confirming he has become stronger than his human version. He gathers the slime's materials, noting this particular slime retained the original properties of its fluid, unlike previous slimes which were of lower quality. Before Rent can collect the materials, he is surrounded by a light and realizes he can now absorb the vitality of slimes. At that moment, his body begins to change, and flesh spreads over his bones. He has evolved into a ghoul. 
He takes advantage of this to learn how to communicate in this state and plans to return to the village. Now as a ghoul, he sets himself the mission to continue evolving. In the depths of the labyrinth, in one of its corridors, we see Rent exploring the dungeon. In one of the passages, he encounters two goblins. Initially, he steps back in astonishment, bumping into the wall. He shares that although goblins may appear dangerous, by using his knowledge of the labyrinth's layout to his advantage, he can defeat them, even two at a time. Rent lunges at both goblins and attacks them with his sword. The goblins block his initial strikes, causing the impact to echo throughout the dungeon. In the midst of the exchange, as they lose strength, Rent takes the opportunity to knock them to the ground, eager to test his new abilities. Now evolved into a ghoul, Rent has become more muscular and agile than when he was a skeleton. His greatest surprise is the increase in his mana, spiritual energy, and divinity. This means he can now strengthen both himself and his sword. After powering up, he charges at the goblins, defeating them with ease. Rent reflects that as a ghoul, he might now be stronger than his human self. At that moment, he hears someone else fighting in the dungeon, discerned from the echoes in the corridors. He wonders if it might be another adventurer. The scene shifts to a female adventurer battling a skeleton. As the skeleton rushes towards her, she strikes it several times with her sword. Seizing the right moment, she delivers a slash, severing the skeleton's neck and defeating it. Rent, watching from the end of a corridor, tries to stay hidden. The adventurer, a blonde woman, tiredly collects the skeleton's belongings. Rent is amazed to see a human after so long and attempts to greet her but hesitates, knowing his ghoul appearance might lead to his death or her fleeing to warn others of his existence. He decides to observe her from a distance. The blonde stores the items in her adventurer's bag. Rent realizes she's a newcomer to adventuring in Malt, as he's familiar with all the local adventurers, who are known for their toughness and often mocking or blaming the weak. Feeling watched, the woman turns around but sees no one and continues on her way. Rent follows her silently through various labyrinth rooms, unnoticed. She seems amazed by the aesthetics of the place, as indicated by her expressions of surprise in each new corridor. When the adventurer crosses a particular hallway, Rent recognizes it as the area where he died. He realizes that understanding her abilities and those of her friends will be helpful, as the malt adventurers are better than most, with fewer malicious individuals, and the guild has always kept him close despite his perceived weakness. As the blonde continues exploring the dungeon, Rent follows her to that corridor. A skeleton suddenly appears behind her, but she quickly defends herself, surprising Rent, who analyzes the fight and notes her well-trained skills but lack of strength, making her numerous hits less effective against the skeleton. He concludes that the best strategy is to dodge and wait for the right moment to defeat the skeleton. The woman struggles to overcome the skeleton, which eventually grabs her sword, stopping an attack. Frightened, she tries to wrestle the weapon back, but the muscle-less skeleton forces her back into a corner of a dead-end corridor. Rent intervenes to rescue her, defeating the skeleton in time. The woman, startled by the appearance of a ghoul, raises her sword in defense. Rent drops his weapon and raises his hands, trying to communicate his peaceful intentions. She understood what he was trying to say, and Rent gave her his money back, explaining that he needed clothes to return to Malt. He also clarified that he was an adventurer, but appeared this way because he died and yet remained alive. The girl introduced herself as Rena Rupaj, stating that as a knight's daughter, she would repay her debt. Rent let Rena go, not fully believing she would genuinely help, but wanting to remain optimistic. He prepared himself in case she decided to betray him by informing the guild of his existence. Meanwhile, Rena reached the guild and informed the receptionist of what she saw. Meanwhile, Rent faced a slime and was surprised by his newfound strength. His body moved exactly as he wanted, and he felt more emotion when wielding his sword, giving him an advantage to the point where he could defeat a slime with a single thrust directly to its core. At that moment, Rena called him, and he was surprised to hear her voice, not believing she would actually return. Rent followed her voice and revealed himself to her. Rena noticed that Rent spoke better now. Rent checked the bag Rena brought and was surprised by the design of the clothes, a robe that could make him pass as a mage. Rent put on the clothes and was surprised because they were enhanced garments, but they slightly limited his vision. He saw a mask in the bag and put it on, but got scared when the mask reacted, thinking it was cursed. He tried to use his divinity on the mask, but his weak divinity couldn't do much as his energy drained first. Rena, hearing it was a cursed object, felt bad and apologized. Rent asked her not to worry and inquired where she bought everything. 
Rina explained that she asked for help at the guild for a trustworthy store, but she found the mask at a different shop and was tempted by its low price of three copper coins, as it would allow her to return to Malt without fear. Rent thanked Rina and mentioned he would need a cleric to break the mask's curse. He touched her shoulder in gratitude, and she took his hand, which made him apologize, thinking he hurt her. But she said she knew he was good and wasn't afraid despite him being a special monster. Rent thanked her for her words and advised her not to force herself until it became a reality. Rena assured him it wouldn't take long and asked Rent to return to Malt with her. They traveled back in a carriage, where Rena shared that she was registered as an adventurer in the Capitals Guild but moved to Malt because there was little work for beginners like her in the capital. Arriving at Malt's entrance, Rent felt sad. Rina asked if something was wrong, and he shared that many in the town knew him and would discover his identity if he showed his identification. Rina suggested entering through a less frequently used gate. Rina recommended the west entrance, and Rent thanked her again for all her help. She asked him not to treat this as a farewell, as she only wanted to help because she liked him and he saved her life, but clarified she would only help until the entrance. From there, he would be on his own. Rent confessed that he really needed someone's help but as a monster, he didn't want to cause her problems. If they were seen together and discovered, she could be seen as a criminal by the town and might lose her adventurer's license. Therefore, he wanted to go alone to avoid causing her trouble. Rena told him that if it weren't for his intervention in the labyrinth, she would have died, so she was willing to risk her life for him, at least this once. These words caught the protagonist's attention, and Rena insisted that they go together to the west gate, regardless of what happens after. They queued for a while and were next to pass when two knights, surprised to see a man and a woman together, stopped them at the entrance. Both were asked for their identification. Rent presented his hunter ID, as did Rena. The guards were surprised to see adventurers and read their names, checking them against a list by their ranks. They discovered Rent was a bronze class and Rena iron class. The guards became suspicious of Rent's appearance, particularly his mask, and asked him to remove it. Rent, unsure what to say, was aided by Rena, who explained that he accidentally put on a cursed mask after being badly injured in a monster fight. Hearing this, Rent showed the guards his ear, which had some flesh and wounds, as his body wasn't entirely covered in flesh. Rena explained that Rent bought the mask to cover the wounds but couldn't remove it because it was cursed. Rent noticed their lingering doubts and invited them to try removing the mask themselves. Rena added that it was safe to do so, as the mask was non-harmful. One of the guards attempted to forcefully remove it but failed. Rena told them they needed to donate a significant sum to a cleric to use their divinity to break the mask's curse. Despite being adventurers, they were struggling to save up for this. The guards decided to believe their story and allowed Rent to pass. Rena was pleased they managed it, and Rent thanked her. Just then, a carriage appeared, and as Rena got distracted, Rent disappeared. Rena began searching for him, calling out his name. Rent, hidden atop a house, appreciated Rena. Despite her cheap equipment, she maintained it well, was intelligent, skilled with the sword, and very brave. He believed she could become a great adventurer as she aspired to. Rent shared that whenever he met someone talented, they often quickly surpassed others. He apologized from a distance and vowed to properly apologize when he looked more human. That night, Rent went to his house, feeling guilty for manipulating someone like Rena but needing a human's help to return. He sought someone with a hidden past who could keep all his secrets. Rent gently touched the door and, finding no response, entered to discover the office empty but lit. He found a girl asleep on the sofa. He approached her, waking her by calling her Lorraine. When she didn't wake up, he threatened to hit her with a book, a phrase he often used with her, hoping she would recognize him. Lorraine asked him not to do it, and upon opening her eyes and seeing his attire, she was startled but recognized him. She asked him not to scare her if he wore a mask. Rent didn't say a word but removed his glove, showing Lorraine his flesh. She was astonished and asked what had happened. We see a flashback of Lorraine, who was worried that the protagonist had not returned yet. She thought about asking the guild to send someone to look for him. Soon, someone knocked on her door. She recognized that way of knocking and wondered why they didn't just enter. She wouldn't dwell on it. After all, she was relieved that he was still alive and leaned back on the sofa, bringing us to the present moment. Rent explained everything that had happened, and Lorraine shares that, as a monster researcher, she was unaware of the existence of a dragon that devours humans and turns them into undead. She asked if that dragon was still in the labyrinth, to which Rent answers that it probably fled the labyrinth. Lorraine clarifies that she would like to say she doesn't believe him at all, but judging by his appearance, she had no choice but to do so. Our protagonist was somewhat impressed that Lorraine could remain calm despite seeing him as a ghoul but he expected no less from someone who is a scholar, magician, and adventurer. 
though deep down, he senses that she does not see him as a friend but as a subject of experiments. Lorraine comments that what she is going to ask will be a bit difficult, but she had to do it and wanted to know if it really is rent. After all, he is undead. He questioned the same. He had Rent's memories and brain, but without a doubt, he died. So he wondered if his undead version and the living one are the same person. He answers that he doesn't know, and Lorraine is somewhat relieved, as she hoped he would say that, since it's something the human Rent would do. Although it's hard to affirm they are the same, she will put aside the whole matter to think about it better and asked him what he was going to do from now on. Rent says he wishes to continue being an adventurer, and will reach Mithril class no matter what. However, although he wants to continue with that dream, he can't go to the guild looking like that. Lorraine asked him if he needs her to accept jobs for him and a place to stay, since he probably can't find an inn that would accept him. Rent accepted the help, but the woman clarifies that there is one condition, and that is he must help her in her research. She explains that no one has had the chance to study a monster that uses existential evolution. The protagonist decided to accept the condition, but asked her not to do any dissections or anything like that. Lorraine started to laugh, asking what kind of person he takes her for, and shares that all she will need from him is some skin and muscle. The next day, we see Rent cleaning the window. Lorraine arrived at the house after having accepted some missions and having collected the money from the runes and the slime fluid he obtained in last night's labyrinth. Rent asked her if she is paying him directly from her own money, which she confirms. This way she avoids the guild taking money for commissions, plus the things he brought were of high quality. The protagonist thanked her for the money and tells her that he will go to the three-pointed spear to visit a blacksmith. He went to the village to look for him. Rent was happy because there were few things in life that gave him more happiness than having a full pocket. As he walked, the villagers in the streets looked at him strangely due to his appearance, so Rent tried to hide his mask as much as he could by using the hood of his robe. Once at the blacksmith, the receptionist was surprised to see the protagonist's appearance and he apologized for looking too strange. She asked him not to worry about it and inquired what he needed. Rent explains that he wants a new sword. The receptionist wielded the sword to inspect it and comments that the weapon has been well taken care of. Judging by the damage, she deduces that the protagonist is a user of magic or spiritual energy. Rent tells her that he can use the three types of powers, magic, spiritual energy, and divinity. The receptionist was surprised and commented that only one other person like him had come before. Rent asked her to keep everything as secret as possible, which the woman agreed to. After all, one cannot run a blacksmith business without being discreet with the clients. Our protagonist took out a bag and handed it to the woman, asking if all that money would suffice to make a good weapon. To which the woman replied yes, assuring that she could make something good for him. However, she warned him that the smith, Klope, takes great pride in his work, so the weapon would take several days to complete. For that reason, she would only take the first half of the money now, and the other half when he decided to pick up the weapon. Besides, she told him that Klope would likely call him several times to ask various questions about how he wants the weapon. Rent said he had no problem with that and explained that if Klope needs to see him, he can visit Lorraine's house, the scholar. Meanwhile, the blonde was researching ghouls in her book. This type of monster is a low-ranking undead with strong physical abilities that survives decapitation. Ghouls usually prefer animal flesh, but especially human flesh. They are mainly found in labyrinths, and some theories suggest they arise from human corpses. There are cases of powerful monsters that transform humans into undead, although in those cases, the victims lose not only their personality, but also their will and feelings. Lorraine was somewhat confused. Rent, being a special case, doesn't lead to a conclusion, but there's little chance he's the same as he was in life. However, she can sense that he is still Rent despite what happened. Then they show us a flashback of the scholar. She encountered some men at the guild, who asked her if she had accepted the job in the blue forest. If so, she could take the boy by her side to handle all the material. The man clarified that she didn't need to pay him since he was a novice of iron class and needed him to gain experience. On the outskirts of the city, in the forest, Lorraine was collecting various types of leaves, wondering if the guild had made a mistake in locating the items, as she couldn't find the leaves she needed to prioritize. She shared that, at that time, the world was a very boring place. Although she was the youngest to earn the title of Grand Doctor, it meant nothing to her, as that title only allowed her to register as a silver class adventurer. After earning the title, she went to the border country of Yarlin without telling anyone. In theory, she was there to collect some herbs she was looking for, but she really had nothing better to do. After a long time searching, she finally found the herbs. Lorraine was able to extract the plant with its root, as without the root, the effects could be less effective. 
she asked the young adventurer to give her the bag to store the items. The boy approached, and the woman was surprised, as he had managed to extract the plants better than she had and in large quantities. Suddenly, a goblin appeared with a bow and attacked Lorraine. The boy quickly stepped in front of her to protect her. Lorraine took the opportunity to throw a powerful fireball at the goblin, killing it. After that, the boy offered Lorraine a glass of water to rest. He asked her if that was her first combat, which the scholar denied, explaining that she always went with escorts or people accompanying her. The boy commented that for someone of silver class, she seemed somewhat inexperienced in combat. He had no choice but to admit that he was sent by the guild to protect her since everyone was worried about her safety. Lorraine took the opportunity to ask him how he knew so much about herbs and their extraction. The adventurer shared that someone once told him that if he wanted to be an adventurer, he should learn to read, write, know about plants, monsters, and everything he could. Lorraine asked for his name, and the boy introduced himself as Rent Faina. Somewhat embarrassed, Lorraine asked if he could teach her about herbs and how to fight. Rent agreed to help her, and that's how their friendship began. For the next 10 years, Rent strived every day to reach Mithril class, while she stayed by his side, researching what she loved. She felt it was a perfect friendship, although she admits that over time it has changed a bit, as she now understands why adults were so concerned about her. It was at that moment that Lorraine remembered she had letters to reply to. Meanwhile, Rent said goodbye to the blacksmith after telling him how he wanted the weapon. The man gave him a spare sword to use while he waited for the forging to be finished. Both wondered why the protagonist wasn't asking for help, realizing instantly that he was in a complicated problem. The blacksmith commented that the mask had a curse and was likely very powerful, so Rent probably didn't ask for help because it could affect others. That night, Rent prepared dinner. Lorraine asked if he didn't want to eat, to which the protagonist replied that he doesn't suffer from hunger. Lorraine took the opportunity to share that while he wasn't home, she reviewed some of his books. It was obvious that he is not a normal ghoul, it probably has to do with the fact that he can evolve, and she wondered what he would become next. Brent told her he doesn't know but wishes to be as human as possible. For that reason, he is looking to reach his next existential evolution. Lorraine told him that, in that case, he would have to return to the labyrinth for a while. Brent said he had planned the same, wanting to defeat all the monsters and become stronger. The next day, we see an adventurer having trouble with a slime, which was cornering him. The slime threw projectiles at the adventurer, forcing him to kneel in fear. Rent was walking through the labyrinth and came across the sea. The slime was about to finish off the adventurer, and the protagonist quickly killed the slime. He asked if he was alright, and the man thanked him for saving his life, commenting that he didn't expect the slime to be so aggressive, and received a cut but it was nothing serious. Seeing the wound, Rent decided to leave, telling us that each adventurer is responsible for themselves. If they die in the labyrinth, it's their own fault. No one is obligated to help an adventurer in distress, and there are even those who pretend to be in trouble to steal from those who rescue them. Despite knowing this, he always tries to save everyone he can. The adventurer caught up to the protagonist, and he asked him to help kill monsters because he needs the money. Rent warned him that slimes are too strong for swordsmen, the adventurer asked if he was a professional adventurer. Hearing this, Rent was surprised. The man explained that he is a cook who owns a restaurant in Malt but owes a lot of debts and has to return 15 gold coins next week, so he had no choice but to try to get it by being an adventurer. Rent simply ignored him. He didn't want to help because he knew there was something odd. After all, no adventurer would dare to tackle a dungeon or labyrinth alone. At that moment, an idea occurred to him, and he asked the cook if he could carry something. At that moment, Rent realized he had become dehumanized, as he was forcing someone injured to continue exploring and even refused to help him. He decided to continue exploring and went with the cook to the same corridor where he had died. Both encountered the ruins, and Rent fell silent, analyzing the place. He was completely sure that the ruins were not there the last time he checked for the dragon. Both explored the surroundings carefully. Rent was somewhat disappointed, as he hoped to find some magical object in the place. The cook told him he had found a suspicious hole in a wall, and the protagonist joined him, discovering a second secret passage. The man asked Rent if they should inform the guild about this, as they could become millionaires. Rent looked at him closely and commented that he was not interested in glory. If he wanted to inform the guild, he could do so, but for the moment, they should venture into the secret passage. Both entered and reached an empty room. The man continued walking, and Rent noticed there was a teleportation circle. He quickly asked him to stop, however, it was too late. The cook disappeared. Rent was worried about this. When someone steps on a teleportation circle, they usually end up in another place, 
typically a lower floor with monsters stronger than usual or a place full of deadly traps. We see our protagonist glaring hatefully at the skeleton, then glancing at the adventurer lying wounded on the ground. Quickly, Rent would harness his power, enveloping his entire body in spiritual energy. He, he dashed towards the boss and with a single slash, pierced its leg to our protagonist Suprisi. The skeleton remained unharmed by the blow and immediately retaliated with a direct punch to crush him. Rent managed to dodge the blow in time with an acrobatic maneuver. Rent wondered why the spiritual energy wasn't harming the skeleton. Not dwelling on it further, he decided to use his magic, releasing a crimson aura. The protagonist dodged the skeleton's attacks and struck its leg again, but to no avail. The boss pushed Rent back with a blow. Rent persisted in attacking hand to hand, somewhat worried because his magic also couldn't harm the monster. Not only that, but the doors of the room were sealed, leading him to deduce that this was the type of room one couldn't leave until the boss was defeated. Rent stood still, contemplating, then invoked divinity upon his sword. Unsure if the weapon could withstand divinity, he attempted a swift slash nonetheless, piercing the skeleton's legs and managing to break the bone. The monster fell to the ground. Seizing the opportunity, Rent climbed onto the boss and destroyed its skull with a powerful blow enhanced with divinity, the force of which was enough to pulverize the skeleton's skull. Later, the adventurer awoke and was surprised to see our protagonist healing his wounds. Rent asked if he felt better, to which the man affirmed. He remembered the giant skeleton and tried to get up. Rent explained that with his current power, he could only provide first aid. The man thanked him for the help, then looked around and was startled to see that the giant skeleton had been completely pulverized, all the bones now literal dust. He asked Rent if he had managed to defeat the monster, to which the protagonist replied yes and handed the man a giant rune. The adventurer explained that if the boss had such a large rune, it must have been very powerful. To downplay his own power, the protagonist told the man that he was just lucky in the fight, offering him the rune if he desired it. The man asked if he was sure about this decision, which Rent affirmed, but clarified that it wouldn't be free. The man asked what Rent wanted, as he didn't believe someone like him could be useful to such a strong adventurer. Rent revealed his appearance to the man and explained that he had been defeated by a monster, unable to enter shops or the guild thus needing someone to do it for him. The adventurer agreed to the request without hesitation and asked if that was all he needed. Rent added that he also wanted to eat and drink at his restaurant whenever he wished, but it had to be free. The man tearfully accepted this, explaining that this time he wouldn't let the restaurant go bankrupt and could eat as much as he wanted. The chef asked how they would leave, and Rent pointed to the magic circle, revealing that only he could see the circles, not others. Later, both went to the restaurant, named the Red Dragon Tavern. Rent was surprised to find the restaurant clean, much cleaner than expected, wondering if the food was so bad it could kill someone. Suddenly, a girl appeared to embrace the chef, delighted that the man had returned alive from the labyrinth. The woman noticed the chef was injured and asked him to see a doctor. Here we discover the girl's name, Isabel. The man asked her to stay calm, affirming that he was only slightly injured, but it was the protagonist who had healed him. The chef decided to show Isabel the room, saying that they can now keep the restaurant. Isabel scolded him, mentioning that if they deceive her again, they won't have any money left. The man assures her that the rune is real, as the protagonist is an adventurer who helped him after learning about the debt. The couple hugged happily, and the protagonist felt a bit joyful. The man introduced himself as Loris Cariello. Both thanked the protagonist for the help. Rent bid them farewell, but Loris stopped him, asking for his name. Rent asked if he promised not to tell anyone. Loris responded affirmatively, assuring that he would keep the secret and address him as Sir. The protagonist decided to reveal his identity. Loris addressed him as Sir, as promised, and mentioned that Rent could come to eat at the restaurant whenever he pleased, as he and his wife would be delighted to have him. Later, we see Rent walking through an alley, lamenting that Loris wasn't a liar or a criminal without a family because he wanted to use a new power on him. As he spoke these words, darkness gradually consumed him. Rent mentioned that he would test that ability on someone wicked. He arrived at Lorraine's house and realized he was losing control. Lorraine scolded him for being late and asked if he had seen the dragon. Rent said no, trying to restrain himself. Lorraine asked Rent where he had placed the letters sent by the Empire, explaining that if he didn't respond to those letters, the entire Empire would come looking for her. Lorraine realized something was wrong, deducing it from the protagonist's silence. She asked if something had happened, as she could sense that something wasn't right. Rent tried to calm her, saying that he was actually happy. Lorraine didn't understand what the protagonist meant, and he surprised her by hugging her. She asked if he was drunk, as she knew that behavior wasn't normal. 
Rent mockingly replied that the dead cannot get drunk. Rent couldn't contain the darkness anymore and violently bit Lorraine's neck. He quickly backed away, trying to regain control. Unconsciously, he mentioned that the blood was rich. Lorraine asked Rent if he was losing control. Seeing that he didn't respond, she decided to use divinity and struck Rent, creating an explosion of light. Rent fell to the ground, and Lorraine asked if he was still alive. Seeing no response, she decided to seal him in a magic field, saying that next time he returns home sober, maybe he'll let himself be devoured. At night, the protagonist regained control and stood up. Lorraine asked if he was feeling better now. Rent said yes, explaining that he had a headache since he went to the labyrinth. Lorraine asked if he felt like something or someone was controlling him or if it was some wild impulse. Rent denied it and apologized for what happened. Lorraine asked him not to apologize, as she expected that to happen. Then she asked if he remembered what happened in detail. Rent said he remembered attacking her. But before that, he met a man in the labyrinth and remembered feeling an impulse to devour him. From then on, he began to go crazy. It was the same when he saw her, that impulse returned, and he couldn't resist. Lorraine explains that it's quite normal since the necrophages prefer human flesh and blood. Then she asked if he felt anything in his body, to which Rent replied no. She recommended that he rest. Rent stopped her and asked her to show him the wound. Lorraine had no choice but to comply. She mentioned that she had sold all the potions to the magic apothecary, but she wasn't worried because she could get the ingredients tomorrow. Rent healed Lorraine's wound. She asked if he could really use divinity without harming himself. The protagonist explained that yes, but he could only perform basic healing. Lorraine was surprised to see that her wound looked better. Rent made an effort to remove the scars and thus completely healed the wound. Lorraine sarcastically commented that now she couldn't say she was defiled by him. Rent noticed that half of his mask had broken, however, he discovered that he could show or hide the mask. Lorraine asked him to try removing the mask. The protagonist tried but couldn't. Rent noticed that he could communicate better now and wondered if he had evolved without realizing it. Lorraine commented that the effects of losing control probably came from that. The protagonist told her that he defeated a powerful boss in the labyrinth, but he didn't perceive any evolution unlike the last time. Lorraine wondered if blood and flesh can accelerate evolution. She mentioned that this theory isn't so far-fetched. Then she remembered that there is a monster called a levito, which are monsters that serve vampires. She explained that levitos are weaker than lesser vampires, which is what he appears to be now with his appearance. Rent asked why he evolved into a levito. Lorraine explained that existential evolution is something too complex and confusing, almost like the origin of the labyrinth. However, she has a theory. Rent asked her to share the theory, and they both sat down. Lorraine mentioned that initially he was a skeleton, then he became a necrophage, but there was something that didn't add up. She asked if he found it strange that he evolved from a skeleton to a necrophage. She clarified that existential evolution transforms a monster into something more powerful, at least. That's the definition they can give, regardless of whether it's true or not. However, she asked the protagonist if the necrophage is the only monster superior to a skeleton. Rent told her that there are various monsters, such as skull soldiers, skeleton knights, etc. According to her theory, a monster can evolve into the form it wants to adopt, which aligns with Rent's desires. Who wants to become more human? Rent asked Lorraine that if that's the case, why didn't he evolve directly into a vampire? Lorraine explained that it's probably something similar to the adventurer guild with ranks. She deduced that monsters must have some kind of rank that measures their power, just like adventurers, and, like them, there are requirements they need to meet to evolve. Besides that, monsters can also change their existential evolution depending on the habitat. For example, a monster that lives in a volcanic area may adopt some fire affinity if it evolves. Not only does the habitat influence, but now that someone like Rent exists, probably the desires of the monster may alter in evolution. The protagonist asked her if he could become a vampire if he tried hard enough and from there, become human. Lorraine comments that it's more likely that the former will happen but she doubts that it's possible for him to become completely human. However, she clarifies that with all this, she wants to make him understand that evolution is not achieved solely by defeating monsters, but he must do more things. Rent thought about this carefully, as to become a levito, he had to eat human flesh and drink human blood, so he wondered what the requirement would be to become a vampire. Lorraine explains that everything is still a theory, so things can change, but even if that happens, she will be willing to help him in any way she can. Rent thanked her for the help, and Lorraine began to experiment with him. The next day, Rent started training in the courtyard and felt better. He tells us that the impulse he had yesterday disappeared, 
but his problem was that he couldn't go to the labyrinth with his worn out sword, so he decided to take it to Klop, the blacksmith. The latter got upset because the sword was ruined, so he couldn't repair it with the same materials. The protagonist explains that he used divinity on the weapon to defeat a boss. Klop says that makes sense, but reminds him that it's impossible to use divinity in the labyrinth since there are no monsters that require it. Rent explained that he encountered a giant skeleton in an unexplored area of the labyrinth. Klop decided to lend him another sword, saying that the sword he's forging for him is not ready yet. The protagonist accepted the spare sword, and on the way back, he came across Loris's tavern, which had many customers, and Rent was glad that he could be of help to someone. We see Lorraine in her room preparing a chemical. She tells us that there are a great number of natural elements that are poisonous. She grabbed various ingredients and placed them on an alchemy table, then used her spells on the ingredients, warning Rent that there might be some chemical that would upset his stomach or dizzy him. However, if someone skilled took these elements and combined them, after purifying them, they could create a poison capable of killing a red bear. The protagonist was amazed by this explanation and commented that alchemy is a fearsome science. He regretted it, telling Lorraine that he is still aware that he should help her in the experiments, but he was worried that some of the chemicals could kill him. Lorraine forced Rent to drink the poison, then asked him if he needed any antidote spells. The protagonist started feeling sick and struggled not to vomit. He mentioned to Lorraine that he didn't need any antidote, simply the taste of the poison was horrible. This surprised Lorraine, and she explained to Rent that he was the first person who could identify the taste of a poison. That meant the poison didn't affect him, but there was a problem. If that were the case, then healing herbs and potions would harm him. Lorraine started yawning from tiredness and asked the protagonist if as a revenant he doesn't suffer from sleep. Rent commented that until now he hadn't felt any sleepiness. Lorraine would feel envy about that and asked him if appetite was something he could control. The protagonist warned her that he had mild sudden impulses to eat human flesh and drink blood. Lorraine handed him a vial and asked him to open it. Rent thought it was more poison and checked the contents. Upon smelling it, he knew it was blood. For a moment, he almost lost control, and Lorraine explained that she put her blood on the vial to preserve it. She used preservation magic on the bottle, mentioning that even if he felt some disgust at consuming blood or human flesh, he should do it occasionally to avoid losing control like last time. Rent agreed to consume it and drank the blood, only taking a drop, which was enough. He explained to Lorraine that his impulses stopped, so he would use drops of blood until the vial was empty. Soon it was dawn, and the protagonist informed his companion that he would go visit the labyrinth, not before going to the guild to take on a mission. Lorraine reminded him that if he wanted to take on a mission, he should show his identification as Rent Fainer. She asked him not to do it because, with his appearance, he could cause a scene at the guild. Rent asked her if that could really happen. He commented that she was right that he looked too different, but he was still of bronze class. So few people knew him and doubted anyone could recognize him. Lorraine reminded him that in the guild he was the favorite because of his personality and attitude, mainly because he was the mentor for the newest members of the guild and helped with the most basic tasks. Rent commented that it was impossible for them to recognize him if they were minor tasks, but Lorraine decided to reveal to him that the guild planned to hire him to work with them. This took the protagonist by surprise, as he never imagined that would happen. However, he didn't want to work for the guild, he simply wanted to be another adventurer. Lorraine thought of a solution since if Rent wanted to rank up, he had to pass an in-person exam. She advised the protagonist to pretend to be someone else to avoid drawing attention. Rent accepted the idea and didn't hesitate to go to the guild. He sighed upon arriving because of the flood of memories. All the adventurers looked at him strangely because of his magical clothes. Rent glanced at several acquaintances. Among them, he saw Sheila, the guild receptionist. She noticed Rent's presence and asked him to come closer, inquiring if he was new around. Our protagonist mentioned that he would like to register as an adventurer. Sheila handed him a form to fill out. Rent took a pen and filled out the paper, various memories flooding his mind, as it had been 10 years since he went through the same process in his human form. Back then, he didn't even know what his ability was, so he wrote his name and age. But now, with his new power, he could fill out more things than he could before. The protagonist finished writing on the sheet and handed it to Sheila. She was surprised to see the name and asked if he really was named Rent Vivier. The protagonist affirmed it and asked if there was any problem. Sheila told Rent that just a few days ago, an adventurer named Rent disappeared. Our protagonist was surprised to see someone like Sheila worried about him, but it didn't seem strange to him, as they had known each other for 10 years. Sheila apologized to Rent, explaining that she was just surprised that he had the same name. 
the protagonist asked if she was referring to Rent Fena, and Sheila wanted to know if he knew him. The protagonist said that Lorraine had talked a lot about him. Surprised, Sheila asked if he was a relative of Lorraine's. He affirmed it, saying that he stays at her house. Sheila was relieved to hear this and revealed that there were many rumors about her, as she was seen with a mysterious man in her house. Rent remained silent, and Sheila handed him his Iron Class Adventurer's badge. She asked him not to die and to try to live at all costs. The protagonist took this as advice and went to the labyrinth. Once in that dungeon, he explored the corridors and heard a strange sound echoing throughout the maze. He wondered if they could be goblins. Soon, he heard voices of people fighting and went to see what was happening, as the voices were of children. We see these two boys fighting a goblin, and Rent stayed to watch them from a column, detecting that they were a swordsman and a healer. He thought they were new due to how young they were. The names of these kids are Rise and Lore. They were ambushed by a slime, but Lori used a fire spell on the slime, killing it. Rent noticed that both worked very well together and thought they wouldn't have any problems winning the fight. He decided to return to continue his journey, mentioning that in his human life, he used to talk to newcomers and show them the labyrinth. But with his appearance, he would only cause fear among the newbies. On the way, he met another adventurer and hurried to explore the room with the giant skeleton before someone else took the achievement for the discovery. The protagonist managed to reach the skeleton room and continued descending to a much lower floor. He came across a kind of room that had been abandoned for a long time. He searched the place and found a human skeleton. He wondered if someone lived in the labyrinth. He found a flower and tried to examine it. Suddenly, a voice asked him to stop. Rent detected someone behind him and turned around, seeing a hooded woman. She asked him what he was trying to do. Our protagonist sensed that the girl was dangerous. Nervously, Rent mentioned that he was just looking for things he could find on the lower floors, clarifying that he was an adventurer. She asked if he intended to steal something from the lower floors. If so, she wanted to know if he was willing to die on the lower floors. Warning him that there are things she cannot forgive, she suddenly attacked Rent by throwing a magical sphere. The protagonist protected himself with a magical cloak but was thrown against the wall. All his luggage broke, and Rent weakly got up while the woman was surprised to see his body. She decided to stop and Rent explained to her that he had this body against his will. The girl commented that explained how he managed to reach the lower floor. She apologized to him and decided to give him her tunic as an apology. Rent was surprised to see an elf. He wondered if she no longer tried to kill him. The girl asked the protagonist to keep the existence of the lower floors a secret, as the room they were in was special to her. Rent asked if she wanted him to hide everything from the guild. She affirmed it, explaining that anyway, a human couldn't enter the room unless accompanied by him. The girl handed him the acacia map as he was an adventurer. Rent checked the content, but there was nothing, it was a blank map. The elf explained that the acacia map was a magical object that recorded the places he had been. After this, the girl teleported Rent to the surface. He quickly returned to Lorraine to tell her what happened and showed her the map. The blonde asked if he was under some kind of curse. Rent commented that he wasn't, and Lorraine told him that the acacia map didn't seem to be cursed, so he could use it without problems. The protagonist asked how he could use the map. She replied that she didn't know, as the map didn't react to her magic. Rent tried to use magic on the map and was surprised to see the entire labyrinth map. Lorraine was also able to see it but noticed that there were two points moving on the map. Rent used magic again, discovering that those points were marks to identify an adventurer, and the map was updating in real time. Those two points were Rise and Lore. Both were surprised to have found a magical object that showed people's locations. She commented that that map was a national treasure and asked if it was possible to find more acacia maps from other labyrinths and dungeons. Rent mentioned that he wasn't sure about that. He used magic to know the structure of a dungeon and was surprised to see the map change. Lorraine was amazed that such an object could show the paths of any labyrinth or dungeon. Rent clarified that the dungeon he set as the target was incomplete. He mentioned that according to the elf, the map recorded the places he had been. Lorraine decided to control her researcher's desires and asked the protagonist who the elf was. Rent commented that he didn't know, but judging by her strength and ability, she was someone stronger than a gold rank adventurer. Lorraine asked about the room they were in, as that information could demonstrate that it was possible to create rooms in a dungeon or labyrinth from which one could rest. Rent mentioned that he would return to the moon reflection tomorrow to explore. The next day, we see the protagonist exploring the labyrinth and dodging an attack from a skeleton, which came as a surprise. He managed to defeat the skeleton and realized that since he discovered that hidden place and became an undead, he hadn't been able to remove the curse of the mask. He clarified that before, he saw it as a disadvantage for being a cursed object, but now he didn't see it that way. 
and in fact, having discovered that area and encountering more powerful monsters were things that make an adventurer of mithril rank. Rand continued exploring the area until he reached the entrance he discovered. However, he found a wall blocking the entrance. He checked the map and noticed that the area he explored before was no longer there. He wondered if that girl really didn't want to see him. Meanwhile, we see the Adventurer's Guild asking about Rent Fena. Everyone was worried that he hadn't returned yet, as all the adventurers saw him as a mentor since, thanks to him, they became high-ranking adventurers. Rent returned to the guild and surprised Sheila. He asked for a mission to defeat three orcs and obtain their meat. Sheila recommended that he choose another mission, as the orcs were very strong for someone of iron or even bronze rank. Rent explained that she shouldn't worry because he had defeated plenty of orcs before. Sheila decided to trust him and gave him the mission. The protagonist decided to leave to search for those orcs. We see Rent returning from his mission and delivering the items to the guild. Sheila was surprised that our protagonist had finished the mission so quickly, and Rent showed the evidence in the bag. He explained that a lone adventurer like him requires a magical bag, clarifying that it took him five years to save up to buy one. But he believes it's been worth it. Sheila looked at him closely as Rant pulled out one by one pieces of meat he had sliced from the orcs. Sheila examined the meat and praised the protagonist for his skill, commenting that the meat was well prepared and preserved. According to the mission requests, she believed the client would be satisfied with the result. Rent asked if she had finished the work, which she affirmed. Rent noticed that she was staring at him intently and asked if something was wrong. Sheila asked him to wait a moment, and after that, she left. All the adventurers in the guild were attentive to the conversation, impressed that Rent was able to defeat three orcs. Some wondered who he was, as they had never seen him in the guild before. Rent began to regret completing the mission, as he was standing out too much for being only iron class. Sheila returned with a document and handed it to the protagonist. He asked what the document was, and Sheila explained that she had just spoken with her superior, and they had reached an agreement. They proposed to Rent to take the promotion exam despite it being his first day at the guild. She clarified that this exam would help him advance to bronze class. Although adventurers don't usually rise in rank so quickly, she believed he had the potential to continue advancing easily. Rent remained silent, thinking about the situation, and decided to accept the proposal. That night, he told Lorraine everything that had happened. She wasn't surprised that Rent rose in class on his first mission, as he has many skills to continue advancing quickly. Rent acknowledges that he owes thanks to his own body, as he would never have risen if he were in his human body. Lorraine advises him that he should use his body for more things, as focusing solely on strength could leave him at a disadvantage in some situations. She would then ask the protagonist what name he used to register at the guild. Rent decided to reveal his new name, Rent Vivi. Lorraine would choke on her tea and, annoyed, asked him why he chose the surname Vivi. She comments that if he uses her surname, knowing that they are very close, people might suspect the situation. Rent explains that it wouldn't be fair for people to think he's letting a stranger into the house, and besides, people were already aware of everything, so he was forced to pose as a relative. Lorraine understood the situation, telling him not to worry about his reputation as Vivi if that's what he truly wanted. After all, she's nothing more than a poor researcher who came from failing in the capital. Rent says that she has done a lot for him and he didn't want to cause her more trouble than she already has. She would say the same, as without him, she wouldn't be able to cook, wash, or take care of the house while he's away. She would then give Rent permission to stay in her house until he regains his human form or finds one too similar. The next morning, Rent went to the guild and a man approached him to ask who he was. Rent introduced himself and mentioned that he needed to take the exam to rank up. The man was surprised to personally know the protagonist, and Sheila commented that she didn't expect to see Rent. He explained to Sheila that his request for the exam had recently been approved. She remarked that she already knew, but she thought he would wait until the next exam week to have time to study. Rent clarified that the next exam week was several months away, and he couldn't wait that long. The exam supervisor appeared, asking everyone to line up and explained that he would evaluate adventurers' theory about the guild and monster items. He warned that only those who passed the theoretical exam would proceed to the practical exam. Rent was somewhat worried about the practical exam, as it usually varies. The last time he took the exam, it involved collecting herbs. Several adventurers followed the supervisor to a room to take the exam. Most were focused, and Rent was surprised to see so many people, more than he had expected. He soon noticed that one of the adventurers had already seen him, a girl named Laura. 
after the exam. The other adventurers were worried as the exam had been somewhat difficult. Sheila approached the protagonist to congratulate him, as he was the adventurer who scored the highest in the theoretical exam. Out of curiosity, Rent asked what the practical exam would be like. Sheila told him that he would need to form a group with others and undertake a guild assignment. The protagonist wondered what assignment would require them to form a group. Rise and Laura were called by Sheila. She asked the two to team up with the protagonist. Rise looked at Rent and introduced himself, explaining that he was a swordsman who uses his energy to increase his strength and would take care of the vanguard. Laura also introduced herself, explaining that she was a common mage but had the ability to use healing magic as well. She asked to take care of the rear guard, and the protagonist told them about his abilities, particularly his swordsmanship, magic usage, and spiritual power. The exam supervisor interrupted the mission, explaining that they would undertake a mission in the New Moon Labyrinth and handed a map to each group. He mentioned that the objective of the exam was to reach the designated point on the map. The groups reviewed the map and were surprised by the location. One of them asked if there were any restrictions for the exam, to which the supervisor replied that there were no restrictions, and they could do as they pleased. Then they asked if they should go to the same place, to which the supervisor replied affirmatively. But only the first group to arrive would receive a reward for their efforts. Everyone concluded that the exam was basically a race. Already in the dungeon of the New Moon Labyrinth, we see Laura, Rise, and Rent waiting for instructions to start the race. Rise asked the protagonist if he had ever been in the labyrinth, and he confirmed it. Rise was glad to hear this because he had also been in the New Moon Labyrinth, although he couldn't get past the first floor. The race began, and Rent stopped his group, advising them to buy a map. Laura asked if they shouldn't use the one given by the guild. Rent explained that that map was a trap, as it was over 15 years old and not updated enough. Rent approached a shop and bought a map. Laura and Rise compared the map from 15 years ago with the current one, discovering that there was a collapsed area and new paths. The vendor advised Laura and Rise that if they wanted to pass, they should trust all the protagonist's decisions, as he could sense a lot of experience in him. Laura wondered why the guild would provide a wrong map. Rent mentioned that it was normal and deduced that they were probably in the wrong guild, as the idea of the exam was not to arrive first but to demonstrate their worth as adventurers. The group decided to visit another area and entered the correct dungeon. As they walked through the corridors, they encountered a skeleton. Rent brandished his sword, but Rise stepped forward and, with Laura's magic assistance, they faced the skeletons, defeating each one. Rent closely observed both of their abilities, surprised to see that they were good at working as a team and in combat. Rise started to get a little tired and asked the protagonist to take the front while he tried to regain his strength. Laura wondered if it was normal to have so many monsters in the area. Rent also began to suspect this and noticed that several adventurers were bringing monsters onto the path they were on. He investigated the corridor and discovered an incense that was attracting the monsters. Rent asked his companions to stay alert as they would soon be ambushed. Laura mentioned that this was impossible because monsters aren't that intelligent. But she was surprised when Rent clarified that the ambush was not by monsters, but by adventurers. Both Rise and Laura couldn't believe this, and Rent asked them to stay behind him as he would take care of fighting against the adventurers. Rent advanced slowly, and at a junction, he prepared to face a barbarian. They clashed their weapons, and Rent decided to throw the barbarian towards Rise, trusting in his strength. Rise managed to contain the barbarian and the protagonist went to the end of the corridor to eliminate two archers. After defeating them, a mage appeared unexpectedly and attacked him treacherously. Rent reacted in time and nullified the magic with a blow. Rise, with Laura's help, would defeat the barbarian, although with difficulty. The group decided to tie up the enemy, and Laura wondered why they would attack other adventurers. Rise mentioned that the other adventurers want to eliminate the competition to make the exam easier. After all, the supervisor didn't impose any restrictions. Rent corrected him, saying that this is actually a glimpse of what can happen in a real dungeon, as the only danger is not just monsters, as there will be adventurers who just want to kill for fun. Rise knew that the protagonist had a lot of experience and would promote him to group leader, trusting in his decisions. The three continued to advance, and a hooded figure decided to emerge from the darkness, wondering why the protagonist didn't attack him if he had detected him. He unleashed his companions and told them that Rent knew too much about the guild, suspecting that he wasn't a Vivi. We switch scenes to Sheila, she met with her boss in his office. The boss mentioned hearing a rumor about an incident involving Rent Vivi. Sheila was surprised and asked if he had done something wrong. The boss mentioned that according to rumors, Rent could be a criminal or a spy, as he appeared in Malt out of nowhere and turned out to be very skilled and experienced. 
they knew nothing about him, casting doubt on his intentions. He asked Sheila to inform him if she found out anything about Rent, and she agreed to the order. Back with the protagonist, he found a huge door with his group. He told them that the mission's objective was behind the door. Laura asked if that door is the boss room, which Rent confirmed. He explained that to reach the goal, they must defeat the boss. He asked both of them if they had ever fought against a boss in their lives, but they denied it. A group of adventurers caught up with our protagonists, and they started mocking them. Some of them began to flirt with Laura and try to blackmail her. Rise intervened to leave Laura alone, and the adventurers threatened to kill them. Rent stepped in, threatening the group's leader with his sword. The protagonist let the group pass first while they rested. The enemy adventurers entered, and Rent restrained his laughter. Laura mentioned that the protagonist has a plan, and they should follow it. Rise asked if he intends to show them how to fight a boss, to which Rent replied yes but clarified that it's not everything. Out of nowhere, the adventurers who had entered made an emergency escape. Rent decided to enter the room with his group after seeing the fight and both prepared to defeat it. Although he was ready to show all his power if necessary because he was concerned about the rookie's safety. If you've reached this part of the video, comment the word skeleton in the comments. Remember to subscribe so you don't miss the next part of this anime.